So um, thank you again for joining us today for Code Club online and remotely. And thank you for Lorna Gibson for joining us from Code Club HQ uh, for delivering this session. More important now than ever to be learning and understanding how we can use the tools that are at our fingertips to work remotely and support learners who are uh, working in various locations. Um, let me just skip to the next slide. So just a, a, an overview for this webinar, very important that you're all chilled out and relaxed. You've got yourself a cup of tea, coffee, water, whatever. Um, we will get through this in 45 minutes. We will also stop for any questions. So if you can, please use the meeting chat, which you'll find on the right hand side of the, the page to pop your questions in. We actually have George Milliken, who is manning um, the chat facility. And as I said, we will stop sporadically as we go through Lorna's presentation with any questions you have to ask and no doubt you, you will have some some questions for Lorna or for the digital skills team here at Education Scotland. Um, my name is Louise Foreman, I'm an education officer uh, and part of the digital skills team and this evening we will, um, I'll briefly go through an overview of computing science across the curriculum I'll then hand over to Lorna Gibson, who will speak about her experiences of delivering Code Club online and remotely and experiences from across the UK and internationally. She'll also be able to showcase some of the new health and wellbeing resources that, that you can all have access to, which are free and at your fingertips. And uh, we'll also have a look at some other computing science resources uh, that we have available and some more webinars that we have during this time in uh, Term 1 and into Term 2. So without further ado. So you're all here because you probably already understand how to embed computing science across the curriculum. But I think now more than ever, it's, it's hugely important to be speaking about um, our three key concepts of computing science and how we can embed that across the curriculum, across literacy, English, maths and numeracy and health and well-being. Um, I think, I, I don't just think, I know that the world now needs more than ever computer scientists. We have so many major world problems that only good problem solvers can solve for us, whether that be a current or future pandemic, whether that be um, extinction of species across uh, the world, we need people to be able to use those hugely important computing science problem solving skills that we learn through computing science, particularly computational thinking, which is the golden thread that runs throughout our curriculum. And again, I, I'm possibly preaching to the converted here. Um, but ever since I am a primary teacher, but ever since uh, I started, uh, you know, working with computing science, working with computing science with our learners, it's always just been that 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 lightning bolt of um, enthusiasm that's captured learners. But um, all learners, females, males, young boys, young girls um, have been hugely engaged in the activities because it's real life. And um, it's, it's, the resources are fabulous. Can I um, just make sure everybody has the, the mute on? Uh, because I'm he just hearing some keyboard noise in the background. Um, okay, so that is like, you know, the importance of computing science. But again, I can't stress enough the, the importance of the computational thinking elements. And again, we get that through the, the Code Club resources, we get that through the Barefoot resources, understanding how to think logically, building algorithms, decomposing problems, identifying patterns, looking for solutions, um, abstraction, looking for the most important parts of problems, um, identifying the most important parts of a problem and being able to solve that and evaluate uh, these problems and solutions. And again, Lorna is going to be able to show us through Code Club and how these Code Club resources can really support our computing science curriculum and how to embed that across the curriculum. So without further ado, I'm going to now pass you on to Lorna, who's going to share um, some of the wondrous things about Code Club. Lorna, would you like me to, to take you through the, the links, the, the, the presentation, or are you happy to do it? I'm going to attempt to take control. I've not Great. done that, so we'll see. 
Thank you, Louise, and uh, thanks everybody for coming along today. Um, my name is Lorna Gibson. I have worked for Code Club now for um, over six years, um, and um, I'm just going to talk to you today a little bit about, I'll give you a quick 60 second whistle stop tour of Code Club for anybody who's not familiar and then I mainly want to talk about um, a bit of work that we did um, over the last month just talking to um, people who run Code Clubs all across the world looking at the different ways that people are already running them or are thinking about running their clubs uh, while we're still living uh, with the coronavirus pandemic. So quick whistle stop tour. Uh, code Club uh, is, a, for anybody who's not familiar, it's an international network of free coding clubs for young people. Um, so we provide all the projects and the resources um, and teachers and uh, other educators around the world uh, bring together some young people, look at the projects, learn some coding, um, you know, be creative, make cool things, have fun, um, and then learn uh, and develop all of those digital skills and those uh, computational skill thinking skills that Louise was talking about. So our aim is to inspire the next generation just to be excited about computing and digital making and understanding that the tool, the laptop, the bit of technology in front of them is not a passive experience of just receiving information, but that they can make and change their world um, by learning to code. So let's see, next slide. Ah, oh, I have control, this is awesome. Um, just a quick um, bit of uh, background, because sometimes people find this a little bit tricky. Um, so we are part of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, so Raspberry Pi being the small credit card uh, sized uh, computer there on the microcomputer on the left hand side of the screen. I keep pointing and realizing that I'm not pointing for anybody else's benefit. Um, but uh, you don't need to have a uh, Raspberry Pi to run the Code Club. Obviously, if you had one, you can, um, but it's just any uh, device that can access uh, the internet. But we are the largest educational program part of the Raspberry Pi Pro uh, Foundation. I just like to mention it because sometimes when people log in and see the Raspberry Pi logo there, it can sometimes be a bit confusing. So over the last month or so, uh, we went out and were uh, reached out to our community. And we've been supporting our community throughout the coronavirus pandemic, but we uh, did a bit of research where we had a series of panel session, focus group style um, sessions where we uh, have to say it was my highlight week. Um, during uh, the whole of the kind of pandemic experience so far because I got to spend the whole entire week in uh, Google Hangouts with just amazing people from all around the UK, from all around the world and sharing and hearing about their experiences through this particular, um, this particularly difficult period of our um, shared our shared existence and part of the reason to do that was to find out you know some people are at different points in lockdown and different um, different kind of situations and so we wanted to work out what people had been trying and experimenting um, to do how people were running the clubs, lots of people have paused their clubs quite clearly because it's not possible to bring young people into schools and things um, but we wanted to look at and explore what ways we could potentially support anybody who was keen to keep going with Code Club in this sort of in the, this next six months period while things are you know, likely to stay um, still quite challenging and, and still very much in flux. Um, so from that, we identified three options, um, which I'm going to take you through um, today. So the first option is the one that's very similar to how the Code Club model worked anyway. And um, so we talk about that in terms of in-person sessions. So there was lots of people, um, so some parts of uh, Australia are coming out of lockdown, places like Tasmania, very small, easy to control border. And um, so they're moving back to in-person sessions. There's some places, uh, one of my colleagues who lives um, in the southeast of England, uh, her school has been in touch with her list last week and they're gonna go back to in-person sessions, although I think um, with slightly reduced numbers. So they're going to do it as cohorts um, of, of a smaller number of, of young people. So when thinking about um, our general advice when thinking about in-person sessions is just, you know, be mindful of local, the local guidance or the guidance for your 
uh, for your country, but also your school and your venue is likely to have a coronavirus plan about, you know, the number of people that they're happy having in the space, whether they're actually happy having adults coming in the space. Um, so if you have parent volunteers, that might not be possible for them to come in. Um, guidance around cleaning and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, that's the important thing to take to, to take into consideration with in-person sessions um, and in terms of, um, I know that lots of clubs have been in touch with us, a lot of schools have been in touch with us because parents um, are now in a position to potentially volunteer more than they had previously with a change in, you know, not travelling to their workplace so much so that they're just down the road from the school and again, you know, schools are very welcome to do that and they just adhere to the appropriate safeguarding um, measures that they would have in place anyway for bringing adults into a school if that's possible with relevant background checks. Um, I think that's probably the one that's least likely at the moment from, from what we're hearing but maybe you know it was a, I was definitely surprised to hear about my colleague in the southeast of England being approached by her school so maybe, uh, maybe things are changing. The second uh, example is the one that lots of people were doing at the end of last term. Some people have done um, things like this over the summer holidays um, and this is where it's an online session. So an online session typically takes place at the same time. So like a code club session would be Tuesday at three o'clock for my club in particular and um, they take place at a certain period of time and either using a video conferencing tool so maybe through Teams um, or if you don't have access to Teams, some people use Zoom um, or Google Classroom um, or uh, sometimes a live streaming. So um, online sessions tend to work in, in two ways. One, it's just like an online club. So everybody joins on the video channel and they can ask questions. Slightly easier if you're all working on the same project, but so not everybody does it like that. Um, but the people can be there and asking questions. Or the live streaming one is where you've picked a particular project and you are talking them through doing that step by step as a very scaffolded and um, handheld way, handheld, handheld uh, way to uh, work through a project. Um, there's been lots and lots of people uh, running online sessions, so uh, what we've done is try to collate as much as possible some best practice um, from things that have worked and not worked. Um, so we do have a document there and these links, uh, Louise said, are, have, have been shared um, and I'm sure she'll remind you at the end where they are. Um, there is some guidance there which brings together some of the tips and tricks um, of best practice for running a club, online club. So examples where people have used like a Kahoot quiz to warm up as an icebreaker ex exercise or halfway through looking at a project to you know, test and identify whether people are understanding the different components um, from the code that they've been using. And then the third example um, is something which were called remote activities. So where the online sessions all took place at the same time, so it was a synchronous session, if we want to use some computer science words, this is much more asynchronous. So this is where you might have a team channel for your club, and uh, on the Monday, you send out, here's the project that we're going to be looking at today. You know, ask your questions in the channel. Um, and, you know, the conversation happens asynchronously. So the young person picks and chooses when they have a look at the project um, and um, might share back what they've been doing or ask a question about something that's not particularly uh, gone well. And often they accumu accumulate accumulates not quite the right word often they come together like on a friday and everybody shares uh, the projects that they've been doing and you can see what, where, where people got to and, and and the things that they've done so similar to the online sessions we've also uh, been chatting to people who have been running remote activity style sessions and we've got a series of, of, of best practice a series of tips and tricks from people who have been running this over the last six months of ways that they have um, engaged and uh, supported uh, the young learners. The other way that people have done remote activities um, is where instead of a live stream where you're coding along with them uh, there and then is to share a video of themselves going through a project or if you've been familiar with um, 
some of the things coming out from the Raspberry Pi Foundation over the summer holidays or since the beginning of lockdown, actually. We've had something called Digital Making at Home, which is a series of pre-recorded videos taking uh, young learners step by step through lots of the Code Club projects, lots of the wider projects within the foundation. So I've seen um, a lot of libraries over the summer holidays have shared, you know, one of the Digital Making at Home videos as their remote activity. The young learners ask questions during uh, during the week and then they share out uh, the projects or you know, post their projects at the end of the week. So there's three main components, um, but the really important thing here is to talk about the fact that um, not everybody's the same, not every situation's the same. We are probably likely to be uh, living on a spectrum um, where we're kind of fluidly moving between different things. There'll be points where classes and potentially schools will have to move to blended learning or completely at home. Um, and uh, so those three options are as fluid as the current education system, basically. So there are lots of people that are doing mixing and matching at the moment. So we kind of do see it as a bit of a pick and mix. So um, there's people that uh, can't have the whole normal code club in a space at the same time. Um, so they're doing half the club in person and half online and rotating that round, either two week blocks or one week on, one week off. Um, and then we have lots and lots of people who are sending home a remote activity, so they're sending home a project and then coming together for an online video session to share their learning and uh, you know, showcase the work that they've done at a different point in the week. So perhaps a project home on a Monday and uh, come the Friday, there's an opportunity to come and say, you know, what they find challenging, what they learned from the experience and showing off their amazing digital uh, creations. And um, so I suspect that's probably a good uh, point to stop and just see if anybody has any questions. I didn't manage to get the question thing up on the side, but I'm sure somebody can help me. So we haven't had any questions from anyone yet. However, I have noticed quite an influx of people coming in in the last 15 minutes. Okay. So I just wondered if there was any questions from anybody, you know, new coming in, if you want to just type that in the chat area or if anyone, you know, if you're sitting there at the moment and you're thinking, well, you know, I've actually got a different situation, please feel free to to pop the question in or even just ask the question now. We, we've got quite small numbers. We've got 25 people um, here uh, in the chat room. So feel free to, to ask Lorna away or what we'll do is we'll just allow Lorna to continue with the presentation and uh, ask questions at the end. So we'll, we'll just give you a couple of seconds there. And sorry if I keep changing the slide there. I was trying to work out how to get the chat to come up the side. <laughs> just technology. Okie doke. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just continue the presentation and we'll ask questions or you'll be able to ask questions at the end if you have any. Okie doke. Absolutely. Thank you, Louise. So, um, so that's really, um, and I'm really, really conscious about time. So I'm hoping I haven't um, gone through those options too much. Um, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, I just, there's a few other things that I thought I would share with you. And then maybe there's an opportunity for a bit of discussion at the end. So um, as always, um, if you're already part of the Code Club community, there's a whole host of um, resources available. And um, we made some new resources, some new certificates at the end of last uh, academic year, which are digitally editable. So um, if you have been doing even just a little bit of coding um, with your young learners and you want to celebrate success, and the achievement that they have, then they are in there and um, you can, unlike the older ones where you had to print and write the name on, these are digitally editable so you can add the name and then you can distribute on Teams so it can be completely paper free, which I know that some local authorities are preferring. Um, I'm really, really excited to tell you uh, about this, this next thing, um, although the animation uh, at the bottom is not working, but that's fine. Um, this is... So we have just released, literally last week, 
um, this pathway called the Look After Yourself pathway. So it's essentially a well-being pathway of some projects that have been uh, that were actually started in planning uh, well before lockdown, um, but uh, they finally got around to finishing these. And I think they just tie in really nicely to um, the objectives within schools at the moment, um, the kind of things that I. I'm interested in exploring as a parent um, and they're just some really nice projects and um, plus the fact that you know if you have been running a code club previously where everybody was all over the place doing different projects at their own level this is a nice new set of projects that allow you to come together and um, you know do something all together in the shared experience so there's six projects based in scratch the link is there so you can see the link at the bottom there you can see the butterflies normally the butterflies are floating around and um, that was a that was the second project which is about making a kind of zen mindful butterfly uh, garden that flies around um, and is beautiful to look at and we also have a code club uh, certificate um, on the dashboard and code club uh, to celebrate going through these well-being projects and um, so i experimented uh, i have a nine-year-old um, who had a bit of a tough day at school last week, last Thursday, um, and so we uh, we didn't do the stress ball one because that was a bit noisy, um, but we uh, looked at the butterfly garden project, and actually it was a really lovely shared experience and a good chance for me to be familiar with the resources there. So um, if they are remotely interesting uh, for you to use either in your classroom or in your code club, I really encourage you to have a look and if you want to use them just uh, crack on and, and, and carry on. I think they're they're a lovely resource and a nice way to um, to bring some health and well-being into, into coding. Uh, the other thing uh, which is also was an animation it's not working that's fine we can always cope with these things. There's a new thing um, a new social uh, series which is launching this week called This Great Thing so if you are doing anything within you know your code club is is running and doing some bits and pieces or there's a child that's done some really amazing coding and you know as an amazing they made a cat run across the screen i'm really not talking about you know saving the world level just you want to celebrate the successes then there's this new social series called this great thing the hashtag um is my code club so if you post anything that's celebrating the smallest of successes um, and tag in my code club. Um, I'd love to see as much uh, content featured from Scotland as possible. So extra brownie points for me, but plus it'd be nice to have a look and see what people are doing um, around the world. Um, I've added some useful links in here. So that's the direct link to the code club projects, just if you've not seen the code club, uh, code club? Code Club projects before, please jump in and have a look. Um, that's the link to the digital making at home stuff. So uh, it has been running uh, weekly since uh, pretty much the first week of lockdown. At first they were doing videos for three projects um, a week, uh, which was a lot. Uh, so they're now just doing it uh, one pre-recorded video and one live stream which takes place on our Wednesday at 5.30 I think um, and uh, they might go down, reduce it down as the year progresses and as uh, things stabilise a bit more but there's a wealth of resources and projects, avail uh, videos of projects available through there so that's something that you certainly could could use and send out without um, any work on your part at all. And then also uh, teach computing resources. So just a quick shout out. Um, although these resources at the moment um, are very much um, scaffolded in the key stages, and um, there's some really great resources in there, both for um, the current situation and blended learning and, and bits and pieces for your computing curriculum. So uh, if you're interested, I would definitely recommend you have a wee look. Um, this is just a quick shout out. So we do have a Future Learn course. And um, so should you, I know I've been looking at support this morning. So I've had quite a lot of schools getting in touch this morning who have parents that are interested. So if you have a parent that's interested in supporting some sort of online code club or remote sessions or, or whatever, over the next period, um, one great way to get them up to speed 
uh, for Code Club without you having to worry too much about it is to send them off to the Future Learn course. It's free to take part. It's about two hours a week over three weeks, although some people sit and, and flash through it in one sitting. But it does really cover uh, all the basics that they would need to know to kind of understand coding and Code Club and, and just how things should work. So that's definitely recommended. Um, and here's another point for questions. So are there any questions? Is anything I said unclear? I'm more than happy. This is still quite new, so um, I'm not as practiced at talking through this stuff as I might be. So there's some stuff that I could have provide more clarity. I'm really happy to do that. Thanks very much, Lorna. Um, we have a few new folk who have just joined us as well. So if there's anything that you would like to ask questions on, and I just actually wondered, you know, is anyone actually running a code club at the moment that's remote um, or online? Uh, are you getting questions? Because I know there's some local authority folk here as well. Um, thanks, Ashley. Sounds amazing. Love the look um, of the, the projects. The projects do look really good. And we're super excited about the, um, the health and wellbeing resources as well. So we will be sharing them far and wide. This presentation can be found in the file section of this, this team site, um, and it's in a folder called Computing Science. And as I said at the beginning, all our Computing Science presentations will be shared in there. Great. So, Ashley, we're hoping to start an online Teachers Code Club to hopefully encourage them to start their own. That's a, such a good idea, Ashley. Yeah. And you'll be in contact with Lorna, I'm sure. I'm not. It's really difficult when you're delivering because <laughs> you would usually speak to people face to face. This is very odd for us. Um, it's also very new. I'm sure within the next couple of months, this will just be old hat. But um, that sounds really good. But no, as I, I, Ashley, I'm sure you're in contact with Lorna because that's something that does sound really quite exciting. I'm just popping my email address there for anybody who uh, has any questions afterwards. Invariably, any time I've attended anything like this, it's literally the point I press disconnect and now somebody's come to my door. Um, <laughs> as soon as I disconnect from uh, the call is when I have my questions. Um, so Rosalind, that's that's really interesting, um, but I would really hope that um, with this presentation and the really good explanation and advice there from Lorna on how to deliver a Code Club remotely online will be of great support to your teachers. Um, so I don't know, Rosalind, if you would be able to share this presentation. We will also be creating this video into a more of a bite-sized video and we'll be able to share that as well and you'll be able to allow the teachers to watch it again. And Brian has come in and asked, does it cover more than Scratch programming, Lorna? So the projects, the wellbeing projects at the moment are just based in Scratch. There are six Scratch projects. But in terms of Code Club projects, we've got projects uh, for Scratch. We've got projects for HTML and CSS, for Python, for Blender, Sonic Pi. There's a whole range of projects there. And um, the team that develop content um, have been using the lockdown time to their advantage. So there are lots of new projects coming out over the next couple of months um, that extend uh, beyond Scratch as well. But in terms of the, the wellbeing projects, um, they decided to focus solely on Scratch just to have the widest possible audience because Scratch is a great uh, starting block. Um, starting block it is block-based, but you know it's a good starting programming language because it's block-based. Excellent. Uh, Mrs. Lindsay has said that she's not running one yet, but would like to engage more staff with coding and hopefully create an online pupil club. And uh, she said the health and wellbeing resources look great. Yeah, so I mean, as I said uh, already, those health and wellbeing resources, you don't have to be in a code club to use them. If you think that you can, uh, if you think that, you know, even just one of them would be uh, relevant and useful as an activity at any point in your uh, class learning, um, then please feel free to use them because uh, you know, there's nothing about the, the Code Club projects. Now, all of the Raspberry Pi projects are open source, um, so we're not prescriptive about that at all. 
Again, I'm also quite aware that a number of people have just joined us in the last 15 minutes, so I'm not sure if you want, Lorna, just to, just to do a recap of the online and remote learning again, just a, a couple of sentences, just explaining how, how that's worked again across some schools, just for those folk who have joined us. Okay, let me just try and work out how to go back. And I'm now stuck in the chat window. Hold on a second. Um, so, uh, just very quickly, um, we've been speaking to people across the globe about the different ways that they have been uh, running um, clubs. Um, and so, there was three identified, now I've broken it, um, three identified uh, ways that people have been running. Um, and uh, one of which is in person. Some people, we're not there yet in Northeast Fife, but some people uh, are actually looking to go back to in person sessions, although with uh, certain measures in place and reduce numbers. Um, some people have been uh, throughout this period been looking at online sessions and by online sessions I do mean uh, happening at the, the as a specific shared time so a synchronous session where you might be using a video conferencing and um, you know through teams or something and everybody all joins in and chatting and sharing what they're doing and asking questions or it might be a live stream type scenario where you're talking them through um, you doing one of the projects. Um, so there is uh, a live stream session that comes out from the foundation at half past five every Wednesday um, where Mr. C um, codes through a project. So some teachers have taken that on board and, and run their own ones. Um, and then the third variant is uh, remote activities, which is a little bit more asynchronous. So you might have a team. Um, where you might have a team for your code club and you send, uh, you not quite set an assignment, I guess maybe it's set as an assignment, but you send out a project um, that uh, people, young people can do in their own time. Now sometimes that's just a project as in shared link from the code club project site, or sometimes it is uh, actually a video walkthrough that somebody has produced themselves or they've accessed uh, the huge range of ones that are available through the Digital Making at Home um, channel, where they've done a lot of coding walkthroughs of a lot of the existing code club projects. And then the important thing uh, to note beyond that is that this really is a bit of a pick and mix. So it's not that you have to say, oh, I'm going to do online sessions and nothing more. Lots and lots of people are doing a mixture of them. So they might be doing uh, so there's lots of the libraries um, in uh, Western Australia are doing uh, an option where they've half their club in half and so half get to come in as an in-person session and the other half do it online and they rotate around because they can't have everybody in at the same time. Um, and then the, probably the most popular one by far is where a project is, is, is sent uh, home, so is put up on, on Teams and then they come together at a specific point in the week and they share learnings and you know discuss where they got stuck and how they problem solved and share out some of their uh, successes um in a, in a video call where they're all present at that point um, and any or all of the different options that you could imagine um are are all absolutely fine so in and amongst those different um, links if you look back at the presentation there were and um, we did collect, uh, so you can see there's a link there for the club uh, virtual club guidance. So um, we have uh, spoken to lots and lots of people that are running these kind of um, clubs so that we could bring together the tips and tricks of what's made their clubs successful, what things they've found difficult and their solutions to that. So um, everything from, um, you know, playing some background music in your online club when you know people are busy doing things so it doesn't feel so eerily quiet and um, through to you know having a kahoot quiz to uh, test where people are at and uh, as a bit of an icebreaker session um, at the start so um yeah that's the kind of the whistle stop tour of the time thank you clubs um, we've got a really good question from david proudfoot asking how can we see the resources before actually starting a club perfect so I'm trying to find the right page. So you can see all of the projects are available there, uh, David, on that top link. So that's the project site. That's open source, so you can go in and have a look and you can use them um, as and when you feel appropriate. 
Um, it should be linked now. It wasn't linked when I checked on Friday, and I confess today has been crazy, so I haven't checked. Um, but the uh, the wellbeing projects are available on another link. Uh, the wellbeing projects are available there. They should appear on the Code Club projects page as well, um, but it hadn't been implemented on Friday, so it may be implemented today. If not, it's any day now. Um, so uh, you can see all of those projects in there as well. Excellent. Any more questions? And we will just, I will take over presenting now. Oh, yeah. Do I have to press anything to give you? No, you don't have to do anything. Nothing at all. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. So really just to, to round off the session today, as I said, this presentation will be available. Uh, we will have, we will make this into a little bite-sized video that you can also share um, with all of those schools who are keen and interested to start a code club. Um, we also have a range of other computing science resources that are all available at your fingertips, such as just using the Scratch resources, the Barefoot resources, which is you know, your, your computing science Bible, really. Um, obviously, along with all the Code Club resources, your Hour of Code, the Microbit Foundation, and also Code.org. I mean, when I started this presentation by saying, you know, we have got so many excellent resources at our fingertips that kids just adore and love, as do adults. Um, I mean, you cannot get better resources uh, than these. Um, I also wanted to draw your attention to our national technologies community within GLOW, our professional learning community. Again, within here, it's another area, it's another repository for a number of uh, resources that we have brought together linking to Curriculum for Excellence, which I'm sure many of you have been in there. But we also have a range of future webinars coming up for the rest of this term. If you have people particularly with an interest in early level, which we are all, mostly all, uh, within the primary curriculum, please do join us on the 1st of October. Um, you will be able to, to access them all via DigiLearn Scott, which is a one-stop shop portal for pretty much everything. Um, it's, it's such a, a marvellous website and again it's great to share that across your schools, across your networks and across the community. We'll have many more computing science webinars in term two. George Milliken, who's also with us this evening, will be delivering um, computing science webinars on actually understanding technology in the world around us and how it impacts on our everyday lives. So that will be a really, really exciting uh, webinar coming for us in, uh, in um, term two. And I would just like to finish off by saying thank you all so much for joining us, particularly at the, the end of a busy day on a Monday. Uh, Lorna, thank you so much for joining us and presenting that wonderful presentation. George, thank you for manning and supporting with the technology today. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please do get back in touch with us. Um, I've also shared at the very, very top of this chat, I've shared with you the link to the evaluation form. We'd love to hear from you. We would love to hear what else that you would like um, within here. I'll just pop it into the chat. Let's close all this out. I just realised I hadn't spotted the typo on the Twitter, so just in case anybody's trying to get in touch with me on Twitter, it's Code Club Scott, not Scotland, just to save <laughs> four whole letters from typing. Excellent, excellent. So as I said, I've just attached it, the update there, so if you want to just give us some feedback, tell us a little bit about what you thought, any changes, any modifications, anything else you would like to see in future webinars, we would love to hear from you. Um, and you, you all pretty much know me, you know Lorna, you know the digital skills team. We are available pretty much now 24-7. Uh, well, not quite 24-7, but pretty much so. Um, please drop us an email, catch us on Twitter, uh, and just tell us a little bit about what, what you would like to see in future webinars. But thank you very much again for joining us, and I'll let you all scurry home or go and have another cup of tea or coffee. But take care. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Thank you.